Hello and good evening. Yat e she a Georgiana Austin yinish ya. Toha na nish le tsa ni ba shi chin ki ani da shinela do ta chi ni da shi che. I'm Georgiana Austin, Director of Programs and Projects at Vision Maker Media. I'm a member of the Navajo tribe and from the Four Corners area of New Mexico. I'd like to welcome you to Vision Maker Media's Returning Home Through Togetherness. What does it mean to be a warrior virtual panel event? We present tonight's event as part of Vision Maker Media's mission to empower and engage Native people to share stories. We envision a world changed and healed by understanding Native stories and the public conversation they generate. With that said, we encourage you to use the Q&A box to ask questions throughout the panel. We will try our best to answer all questions at the end of the panel. We'd like to begin this event in a good way. First, by thanking PBS and the Cherokee Nation Film Office as sponsors of Vision Maker Media's 45th anniversary event. And secondly, by opening this event with prayer. So please take a moment to pray with me. We turn our thoughts to the creator or great spirit and send, great, and send greetings and thanks for all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on this mother earth. We gather our minds together as one tonight. We thank you, Creator, for providing us with courage, faith, and strength to do your will and to hear the stories that you would have us share and hear tonight. Now our minds are one. Yeah, thank you. Now I'd like to introduce you to filmmaker and moderator of tonight's event, Charles Boots Kennedy. Boots is an Oklahoma City-based filmmaker and member of the Kiowa tribe. He spent 10 years serving as documentary producer for the Oklahoma Educational Television Authority, OETA. He has won many awards for his work, including eight Heartland Emmy Awards and five National Educational Telecommunications Association Awards, including 2008 Best of the Best. Boots has been awarded the CPB PBS Producers Workshop Scholarship and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting's Input Producer Fellowship. His recent short film series, Under the Battle TP, the Kiowa Black Leggings Warrior Society commemorates veterans and can be found streaming for free at visionmakermedia.org. Now I introduce you to Boots. Take it away, Boots. Okay. Glad to be here. Thank you for uh, being here with us on this beautiful day, on this Veterans Day, to celebrate our warriors, the people that put their lives for in, in, uh, for their people to uh, put themselves out there. Um, uh, tonight, they, they've chosen me because I'm a filmmaker and I just completed a four-part series uh, entitled uh, Under the Battle TP, and it's covering our Kiowa warriors, our Kiowa Black Legg Leggings um, uh, Warrior Society. It's a veteran society. And it's a society that uh, uh, is a uh, one that's been around um, from our traditional uh, pre-reservation days and after, uh, and that continues today. Um, I want to uh, um, do a land acknowledgement. This is something that's kind of come uh, come about the last few years, is to recognize the land that we're on. And uh, for for me and Blossom, I'm, I'm joined today by Bloss Presidio of. Um, one of our, our warriors, he'll introduce himself in a, in a moment, but I, I want to recognize the land that we're on here uh, in Oklahoma, our traditional land. So I'm in Oklahoma City, so we're going to recognize the Caddo, the Wichita, the Kiowa, Comanche, uh, Kiowa, Apache, uh, Osage, and Pawnee, and all these all these tribes kind of overlap within Oklahoma, and we've had um, a lot of uh, uh, overlap within our tribes. But um, um, so I, I feel good, I feel great, and to be here and 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 to celebrate to to celebrate with one of my elders, uh, someone I, I look up, I truly look up to, um, and on this on this beautiful day. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, let uh, uh, our panelists, uh, uh, Bloss and uh, Lance Forstar, introduce themselves kind of in, the, in in their own way, and then. Um, We'll kind of go from there um, and, and kind of get into the subjects of, of uh, warrior societies within our tribes today. So, uh, boss, uh, we'll let you go first if you don't mind uh, kind of introducing yourself and and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself so people get to know you. Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Boots. Uh, my name is uh, Bloss Presidio. Um, I'm a uh, Kiowa, and um, uh, my Kiowa name is uh, Maltahalki. Uh, it's a hook nose, hook nose man, or um, 
a prominent nose, and um, I'm a um, I'm a veteran. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, Vietnam veteran, and I served, I served in uh, during the Desert Storm, Desert Shield, I went on active duty. They, some people call it the Gulf War. Um, I'm um, uh, a um, a headman of, of one of our existing uh, warrior societies, the Kiowa Black Leggings. We call it uh, Tongkongo. Some people call it Tongkongo, and it's uh, collectively it's a Tongkongo, the warrior society. Black Legs. That's what it means. And over the years, it uh, when it was revived, it was kind of, uh, the name was kind of uh, it was changed to uh, to Black Leggings, uh, which we're known as today. Um, but um, I'm a, a, a veteran. Uh, I was with in Vietnam uh, with the, back in 1968 with the Infantry Battalion, uh, 3rd Battalion, 27th Marines, uh, H&S Company, 81 Mortar Platoon. I uh, was there during the height of the war. I um, um, gained a lot of uh, lifelong experience experiences um, and um, so um, I don't know how long I have to talk or I'm going to talk, but uh, uh, one of the things I, I see is being uh, the things uh, the things that I went through uh, as a young man before I went in the Marine Corps, uh, while I was in the Marine Corps, after I got in the Marine Corps, and I'm a firm believer that uh, God gives us the desires of our hearts. And with me, it's been that way. It's uh, I saw something, um, and uh, that I, uh, a, per, a, a type of person that I wanted to be. And uh, my life has been a series of uh, of, of uh, experiences, uh, some traumatic, um, and um, uh, but I believe our, our Creator uh, God has uh, a way of. Uh, doing that and so with my experience it came uh, uh, um, piece by piece uh, building blocks and so the doors were open opportunities and uh, a good 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 opportunities and so I went through and I, I took those steps and um, it's uh, uh, God put people in um, um, uh, to uh, there to help me and um, I um, it built me into uh, a, a leader uh, of our of our tribe, uh, or what we could guess you could call our tra a traditional society, a surviving warrior society, um, a society that was created in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Uh, it when it uh, became inactive, and uh, after we uh, came on the reservation in uh, about 1874, late 1874. And uh, died out in like in the 1880s, was revived 1912, 1927, is revived in 1958, and it's uh, been um, uh, active since that time. And so I'm uh, the, uh, I guess you could say, the second generation of leaders of uh, that uh, from that time uh, when it was revived in 1958. And those men that revived our society, uh, they were there was about seven, eight elders that helped those World War II, World War One, one veterans revive our society. So that's the society that I, I'm a vice commander. And um, so, um, without going any further, I mean I can go on and on and on and tell you about our society, uh, but that's uh, who I represent. Koigu, that we, we call it, that's our, what we call a Kiowa, Kiowa, Kiowa people, Koigu by dog. And uh, that's, um, I'm a Kiowa Indian. And uh, so, uh, so thank you. That's great. That's, that's part of what I do. Great. Thank you, Blas. I, I appreciate that. Um, and, and Lance, are you ready for us? Uh, are you ready to um, uh, introduce you? Go ahead and introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, you might not be ready. Oh, not quite ready yet, is he? Okay, so uh, let's let's go ahead and um, uh, 
let's go ahead and uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, warrior societies. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give uh, Lance an opportunity. To, uh, it, we're, our veterans today that joined us are very busy, so it's a very busy time for them. Um, uh, Bloss had several things today for Color Guard, and I know Lance is a, a family man, has lots of uh, obligations today, so, um, uh, so uh, it's always, always best to take care of family first. And we're all on Indian time anyway. So, um, Bloss, can you uh, just, uh, we'll go ahead and get into the questions and then we'll come back to Lance when he gets uh, uh, settled. But um, can you just tell us a little bit about the Black Legs? The Black Legs, is a, is a, you, you already started out, it's an ancient, um, it's an ancient society, but what, what, what role does it fill within, our, uh, within the Kiowa people? What, what does it fill and, 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 and how, how, uh, what, is, what is it uh, uh, geared towards teaching, I guess, to the members, that, the people that are members of it? Oh, well, um, to, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, I know I've heard this before uh, from our people, you know, men and women, and uh, what it means to them, it means um, um, identity. Uh, it, uh, it means um, as a people, as a, a Kiowa people. And, you know, like all of our tribes, you know, God made us uh, certain people. Um, and uh, there's only, I believe, um, roughly uh, 13,000 um, of, of, of our people in rural Kiowas. And uh, among the, uh, the uh, millions and millions of other races. So we're very small, you know, we're so day. And for whatever reasons, our people hold to that I uh, identify with uh, us, identify with um, uh, uh, with um, uh, with the being, uh, I guess you could say, um, uh, holding on to our songs, our our dance. We have uh, we have our own uh, uh, steps of, of dance. We have names for them. We have songs that have uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, what we call vocables. We have songs that have words to them and that were uh, some of those songs were handed down to us uh, from uh, when our society uh, were, society society was or, or, uh, created and um, so uh, it uh, that's one part of it you know it's a, the, the individual uh, uh, a man or woman um, and that's uh, that's not a member I could say I'll say that uh, and then it's and then it's for the members, and then of course, uh, or well, you throw in the families, you know, their family members. Are, it's a it's a source of uh, of pride, you know, uh, for uh, the families, and so they have an opportunity to um, um, to uh, support their men, uh, their veterans, uh, just like they um, uh, did. In the 1800s, it may not be exactly the same. That's what our old folks told us. Um, whenever uh, the ones uh, the, that uh, I was uh, had an opportunity to meet from uh, that were uh, leaders, uh, you know, they, you know, it may not be the same, but do your best to uh, to keep it going. And so that's uh, that's a, a role that I play. And so. Um, uh, and then I'm not I'm not even talking about our, our members, you know, the members themselves. It um, it uh, pl it plays uh, uh, an, an important role, I believe, in, in their lives. Um, so um, starting uh, from um, um, just um, it, it's it's a it's an opportunity for them to. Um, to, for them uh, uh, to to um, and their families to um, uh, to for them to show that uh, that they're uh, they're they're um, to continue our, our our old ways our old song our old dance uh, that was that was handed down to them um, and uh, it's a time for us to reflect on. Um, our military service, um, time for our families to uh, honor us for our, our military service. And um, so it's time, it's a time for us to, to heal. Um, 
because I really believe that our uh, uh, the uh, our the creators of our uh, society years ago when we were on the plains, you know, they knew uh, the, our uh, our elders knew what uh, the same we they suffer the same things that our modern day warriors suffer when they go off to war and they come back, and so they created these. Uh, uh, these are societies uh, as a means, uh, um, not just for uh, to to celebrate the victories and uh, celebrate the individual accomplishment, war accomplishments, and uh, to, uh, and the opportunity for the families to um, to uh, recognize their their veterans, uh, warriors, but as a means to uh, gain. Uh, um, a recognition for people, unknown men and uh, as a means of healing for uh, when you come back from war. Um, so that's uh, what I, I, I really believe that, uh, you know, uh, those things weren't hand told to us, but, you know, you have to um, look at it, you know, you have to, uh, to, to see and then to see it kind of, and then you see how uh, the actions of uh, of everything, the whole society, and how it uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the people uh, want it, you know, um, the people um, enjoy it, you know, they in, they enjoy coming together and to celebrate uh, uh, the accomplishments of their veterans. They uh, enjoy the the songs that aren't song, aren't sung by any other society uh, other than our society. And uh, they also enjoy sharing um, those things with other people, other tribes. Uh, they, you know, so and they, uh, it's a time to camp together. It's a time for them to share their food, uh, their material things. So um, I, um, that's part of it. You know, and I have to say it's a beautiful thing, you know, growing up, um, you know, I've, 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 uh, I've been going to black leggings, you know, as support for our veterans since I was a kid. And it's just, it's, it's a wonderful thing to, to see that in encampment of warriors, it was an encampment of strong families. And if you're Kiowa, you know, you're, we're all related to strong people and strong warriors. So it's, it's a, it's a real honor to, to have, you know, someone like Bloss here. And I see that uh, Lance now is uh, at his location and, um, so, so Lance, um, uh, uh, you got to. Uh, I'm gonna give you the opportunity and in introduce yourself. Can you tell me a, a little? Uh, tell me who you are and a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, I'm. Uh, turn on there my you. video there. Okay, there I am. <laughs> there's a, of course, there's a, um, lots of obstacles to, to do some very small things in the time of COVID. So, um, how daguchi I'm a kai chantamagi abugation as a matsuno. Uh, um, today, uh, uh, my name is Lance Elliott Forstar. I'm a U United States Army veteran. I live, reside up here in the northeast corner of uh, Montana on the Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux Reservation. I'm a member of the Assiniboine tribe, um, and I apologize for speaking before my elders. Um, I'm approximately 45 years old. I'll, I'll be turning 46 here in a couple months. Um, I'm the father of, of uh, seven beautiful children, and um, four of those children are married, and they've, uh, they, they've given my wife and I 15 grandchildren. So we've, we've got uh, a, quite a big family. So we were trying to get into a, um, into a veteran's meal at the American Legion here in Poplar, Montana, and then we, we just got turned around, so I had to try to find a place and everything's closed down. So I'm outside in the 20 degree, 30 degree weather outside in front of the college here, but I found some light. So um, always got to improvise and, and overcome, but um, it, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm a, uh, of course, a United States Army veteran. Um, as I said, um, I received training in satellite communications. Um, one of my first jobs was working for Senator John McCain when I was 16 years old. Um, and the, the reason why I'm on this call today is because uh, we have a mutual friend um, named Georgiana, and she worked with uh, a campaign here in, uh, in Wolf Point. We opened up an office to get a president elected, 
Um, this was back in 2007, 2008. Um, I've been uh, hitting the ground running ever since and, and do lots of uh, community organizing. I've been the, the chairman of the Fort Peck Assiniboine Council on, on a voluntary basis. Um, throughout the years, I've uh, um, been actively involved with uh, Fort Peck Warrior Society, um, the uh, Suquamish Warrior Society over in Suquamish, Washington on the Port Madison Reservation. I've, uh, I've, uh, I was entered into that society and I helped out with, um, as April mentioned, some of the some of the Veterans Day and uh, Memorial Day um, happenings and uh, got to experience how they do things over there. Um, actually was just sent a, a patch by, um, he was a former vice president of the, of the, um, the society there, uh, a, a nice big patch of uh, Fort Peck um, or the Suquamish Warriors patch. And I don't, I don't have a bike or a, or a, a leather jacket to put it on, but it's, it's uh, sitting up there um, on my stuff. So uh um, the, the, the Warrior Society, as I understand it, um, you know, of course, to, what it means for me to be a warrior when I was uh, 20 years old, um, you know, as I mentioned, I've, I've got quite a big family. And um, there, there's, of course, all sorts of obstacles and there's all, all sorts of ways to try to figure out how to overcome these obstacles. Um, I'm currently raising uh, five grandchildren, um, Kamora, uh, Katrina. Uh, Cardell, Sky Blue, and Kaimani. Um, Sky Blue, Cardell, and Kaimani just came up from the Standing Rock Reservation, and they're 9, 10, and uh, 11 years old. Uh, we brought them up uh, a couple weeks ago, so we've got uh, two other grandchildren in, uh, in high school. So we've uh, raised seven kids to adulthood, uh, and we're raising uh, five more kids to, to adulthood, um, our grandkids. So it's a, as a warrior, what, what my job is, is to not only provide and um, protect um, these children, but the, the children in our community. Um, whenever there is a, um, a situation that occurs, I, I was just um, reminded of a, a situation back in 2016 where we had a, uh, a five-year-old girl that was abducted. Oh my gosh, uh, I think we lost Lance. Uh, we'll get him back in a moment. Are we still on there, George? Okay, we'll wait on, um, we'll uh, get Lance back on there and we'll go ahead and um, uh, ask uh, Bloss, visit with Bloss a little bit more from, uh, while they're working on that. So Bloss, um, uh, you know, in the videos that we did uh, under uh, under the Battle TV, they're very serious videos in a lot of ways. Uh, they, they kind of, uh, they're profile videos, they tell a little bit about your lives. But you, you uh, there's some seriousness about it too. Um, and one thing I wanted to ask, and kind of because this is pretty common with a lot of um, uh, uh, war veterans, is uh, about your experience after the war, your experience with PTSD. Um, do you mind talking a little bit about that? Um, no, no, uh, no, I don't. Um, um, I guess I really haven't. Um, um, well, I, I'll just say this. Okay, I'll try to answer your question. Um, it, uh, like I said in that video, um, you know, everybody uh, that um, that does uh, is on. Uh, I guess you could say on the battlefield, or that's in the in a war zone. Um, and I, I reflected this, uh, you know, in later years after I got out of Vietnam and everywhere I went, I was an infantry battalion and a mortar platoon. Everywhere I went, um, the enemy was trying to kill us. You know, it didn't matter where we were, you know, whether you were back in the compound or whether you're out in the bush, or whether you're providing uh, uh, mine sweep charity down the uh, what we call MSR Road or Two Cal Bridge Road, uh, the, the enemy was trying to kill you everywhere. Okay, you get back home, and uh, so you try to, um, um, you know, um, live your um, a normal, get back into a normal routine. But a a, a lot of a lot have uh, you you've changed, you know, um, and like. Um, and, and like I said, said uh, earlier about a, I saw a common thread, and uh, Darwin Palmer said it uh, 
and and I've said this. Uh, he was he he was pretty uh, he he um, what's the right word? He said it. You know, I didn't I didn't you know in my interview I, I didn't, but I I can assure I I've told this to whoever will listen to me. You know, um, let me let me give him context. He's he's okay. he's uh, Darwin's seen a common thread between the four videos that I did that he 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 uh, noticed after the fact after watching them. There was there was some kind of common thing. Can you, you uh, explain a little bit more about what that what you've seen that was common between all four of you uh, three of you veterans? Oh yeah, that was um, that. Um, um, the, about feelings, you know, about about your feelings, about uh, whenever you you uh, you went into war, you had to um, did and you um, you had to did your your feelings, or you know, you had to to. Uh, we used to have a saying uh, in the, the Marine Corps and, and uh, Army and uh, in Vietnam, it don't mean nothing. You know, it don't mean it. And in the in a word, uh, it was to uh, to tell yourself that um, uh, that whatever you see, whatever you go through, it's not going to hurt you. So you can't you can't um, show emotion right there, and you got to go through it. And then as a result, it uh, it uh, it deadens your feelings, emotions. And so when you get back, you know. Like I just like Darwin said, and I was the same way. But and so he apparently regained his emotions somewhere along the way. He didn't go into that story, but I have a story where mine um, uh, was uh, revived. So uh, and it was only after in, in 1997 when a fr good friend of mine, Leon Porky Hunter, uh, who was uh, you know, I won't go into on and on to, but he was a Marine, good friend of mine. I saw him in Vietnam as a machine gun. Uh, and um, uh, he died, and I was ex he and I were good friends, and I just my feelings came back, and I cried and I cried, you know. And so since that time, my feelings, have, my emotions came back. But it took that to my life. Um, so um, and so whenever you go through life like that, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, um, you know, you you harden yourself to uh, in in civilian life to to uh, uh, to things. You know, um, you, um, whereas I, I would I think that if you uh, in a in a say a, a, a marital relationship, uh, you um, instead of hardening yourself and wanting to to exact uh, and being uh, mature. Uh, responsible, you, you choose a uh, immature way to react to a, uh, a, 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 a a situation in a relationship, and where and as and so you continue to to react in a negative way, doom, 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 doom. and whatever relationship that uh, other person had, the love that uh, they had for you, you know it's gonna. That uh, that that love is gonna it's gonna go it, and so and so that's what uh, I think that uh, veterans like myself and others uh, went through and so uh, regarding just that one area of our lives uh, a, a relationship and it, it, it affects other other types of relationships too your uh, your could be your parents or your brothers or sisters. Uh, your friends, um, and you destroy them, you know, and and you get angry. And I know I know one thing uh, dealing with uh, that with PTSD was anger, you know, and um, and immaturity at that time. You didn't know what was going on, and so you you allowed yourself to get angry, and you know, uh, nowadays you might get angry and it comes and it goes, you know, but Back then, um, I dwelled on it, you know, and that's that's not good for somebody to stay angry for a day, two days, you know, just ball it up. And so that, um, uh, but it took years and years, um, but I survived somehow or some some way. Uh, got uh, some spiritual guidance. And, you know, I became a Christian and 
little by little. Um, and, you know, even that wasn't no overnight, uh, um, um, you know, a change in um, some of my behavior. But uh, I, um, um, I was, uh, but over the years, I was able, able to, uh, you know, to, to find a path, um, go, uh, find therapy, and to um, to um, address uh, the, uh, those things. Uh, alcoholism was one, you know, another thing, the physical, you know, reliance upon alcohol and drugs uh, to, um, um, I guess you could say, self-medicate and um, then um, different things happen in your life uh, that, um, uh, thank goodness, I, I woke up, you know, and I started, I, was, I started to seek help and that there was uh, uh, the Veterans Administration uh, had programs in the, about in the um, 1988 when I first went in to seek help. Um, he had a, 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 an organization called the Vet Center, and uh, I started going there for therapy at the VA. And um, uh, from that point on, I, I, you know, I got into the VA system. But it took, um, like I had said on that video of my, uh, the, the, um, at the end, uh, my the second marriage was um, was um, ending, and so that's whenever I went in for help. Um, and so, um, um, I don't know if I've answered that question, oh, but yeah. Yeah. that's, uh, that's, uh, that's just part of what, uh, uh, you know, what happens to, uh, to, uh, to, to our, our, our veterans, to happens to us. Another thing too, is, uh, uh, dealing with, uh, here in Oklahoma anyway, and I'm sure that uh, I could safely say this, uh, throughout the United States, uh, uh, people of our generation, uh, I was born in 1947, so growing up in the 1950s and the 1960s, um, uh, trying to, uh, uh, um, or um, having it known that you have a, a problem, I guess you could say a mental, we, it's easy to say now, but it wasn't then, a mental health problem. I have a mental health problem, you know, back then, you were tagged with a stigma, you know. In Oklahoma, uh, the Mental Health Institute institution, one of them was uh, Fort Supply, you know. And believe me, if you uh, were sent to Fort Supply or um, or even one of your family members, you know, there was a stigma to it, and that it wasn't a good stigma. It was a it was something uh, bad. So we had we had to overcome that bad uh, uh, a stigma of seeking um, 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 care, uh, mental health care. And so that's what men like me and women uh, had to overcome. Um, so, but thank goodness we had men like Audie Murphy, our uh, most decorated hero of uh, uh, World War II that fought for the, uh, the recognition fought with the VA um, uh, to recognize uh, and treat P what we call PTSD. Back then, they called it uh, was it shell shock. Shell shock. And um, so um, we have to um, give him credit and other men credit for uh, um, uh, um, getting the VA to. To recognize PTSD as a uh, as a uh, disability, and as a uh, and then to open up um, um, increased treatment for uh, uh, PTSD. So um, anyway, that's that's what yeah. I have to say about that. Yeah, unfortunately, PTSD. You know, it's it's a, the the thing that uh, our veterans carry home with them, and and you know, it's a lifelong uh, struggle at times. And one of the most interesting things that you know, just visiting with the, the Kiowa veterans that uh, we had stories on was that there's uh, a large amount of guilt that um, veterans feel uh, leaving the field or leaving injured, like things aren't complete for them. So there, there's, uh, there's that as well. 
Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. I know that we had a conversation like that. Uh, Lance, there he is. Hey, Lance. Um, uh, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got you back. Hey. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not. I won't give up. I, <laughs> I was. I was. I was sitting out there, and it was about 20 degrees. So it's. Uh, oh, it just man. zapped the the energy or the the power from my phone and my earphones, and I had to jump back in the car. And the family's in the car. I, I guess I, I guess what I was saying, you know, and, and, uh, to, to just kind of end what I was saying, there, there was uh, what it means for me to be a warrior. Um, and, and I'll kind of um, piggyback on what what, the, uh, what what our elder here was was talking about with the uh, post-traumatic stress. Um, but what it means for me is, you know, like to stand up for our community members. Uh, in 2016, we had a, um, a five-year-old um female that was abducted she was a uh, she was kidnapped and i think every level of law enforcement came into the community in one point they shut down the rail lines from uh, uh chicago to seattle um and then the first thing i did was get up and I, I went straight to the to the grandma and i asked what i could do to help and, and for the next couple of days we um, the community as a community organizer and as a warrior, I, I stood up and I went out there and I did everything that I could to to, um, to give the, the grandma a peace of mind, to give the family a peace of mind, to be there as a protector. And and you know we we did find we did find little Macy Lily. She was uh, she was found outside of town and, um, right before a blizzard. It gets really um, the, the the weather up here is as Georgiana knows she stayed up here, but it's. Uh, they could get like 30 below at least with the wind factor gets even, even colder. So there was a blizzard coming and, and she, she was found. Um, the community had gotten together. Um, and the, the other aspect, you know, and then even just like uh, incidents like that, I was on cloud nine, the, the community was on cloud nine. Um, but then when we, uh, when the, the, uh, the perpetrator was, was uh, arraigned, I was invited to the arraignment. And, you know, it, it was, it was really sad because he started laughing when an alarm went off or something. And I just got so mad. And, and, and as um, the gentleman, excuse, excuse me for not remembering your name, but um, as, as he had said, you know, this instant anger, it was, it was just, everybody had to go outside, but I was just so full of anger and I was so full of um, just uncontrollable emotion. You know, I had to be outside and I had to look up into the sky and, and, and try to breathe and, um, and it just felt like it was uh you know i, I was having these uh, anxiety attacks these panic attacks just because it was it was it was just so traumatic for me too just to, to to know that this this young young girl had gone through that type of um uh, sexual trauma she had been uh, she had been raped and kidnapped and, um so so the main thing was that uh when when, when i worked with the Fourpeck Warrior Society. They, we, they started a Fourpeck Warrior Center. And um, I received training through the VA on motivational interviewing and as, as a case manager for the, um, the Warrior Center here. So the, uh, the, the grant for DM program, the VA provides uh, uh, three opportunities for, for veterans that, that qualify to get into. It's like, it's basically like a, um, it's like a shelter type type thing but there's uh food provided there's, there's structure provided and um, a lot of the times it's uh it's it's a stepping stone for inpatient treatment um but but one of the biggest things was that we talked about um post-traumatic stress injury so when we talk about ptsd the, the way i was um, taught was we, we, we address it as a as a injury instead of a disorder because when we, when we give it that that title that um, when you use that language um, as a disorder it carries that stigma and as uh, the gentleman uh, a4 mentioned as he had said before um, you know people don't want to have that mental illness stigma um, and, and you know the, a lot of the times you know it's 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 because of the self-medication and, and, and just all of the 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 pre-existing conditions on the re on reservation life as it is, um, it, it's really hard for for our veterans um, to actually get help. So the so some of the approaches were like the motivational interviewing, like we, we talked with the with, with veterans and um, 
And, uh, you know, I'm not a combat veteran, but I, I've, I've been through plenty of traumatic experiences in my life um, to, to qualify for, you know, uh, disabling conditions. But I don't, I don't try to use it as a crutch, but, I, but I've tried to use it as more of a, a tool to understand for, for me to help. Because I, I've um, been involved with that type of healing, but the, one of the biggest um, experiences in my life was being involved in our Cinnaboyne Medicine Lodge. The Assiniboine Medicine Lodge is like the equivalent to um, a Sundance. Um, and, you know, you make a commitment, you go up on the hill to prepare yourself. Um, and I did that for four years. So I actually completed something. You know, and it, it felt great to, to go through that process. But there's uh, specifically with the Assiniboine tribe, the, the Kono Yade, um, we have a soldier's lodge. It's, it's, it's instead of two two teepees that are put together and th this is the uh the fort singing the four singings that occur throughout the years throughout the year and um that four singing is uh the beginning of the medicine lodge um and at that time uh four veterans are are chosen by our war chief um, our current war chief is uh martel ream he's a, a combat veteran um, who was given the the right to conduct this ceremony by the uh, canoe paddler chief, um, Joseph Miller. Um, he, he's still very much involved with our ceremony alive. But the, um, the, the medicine lodge, um, the, the keeper of the medicine lodge, uh, Mike Turcott, he was given the, the lodge from uh, my uncle Larry Wetsit. And that was given to him by my uncle uh, Kenneth Ryan given to him by auto control. So there was a there was a point in time where we couldn't practice our, our ceremony. So not till the American uh, Indian Religious Freedom Act, I believe. Um, so around the time I was born in 76 um, was, was the first time they were actually able to to come back out and, and, and build these lodges in, in public with people knowing. Um, but during the, the soldier ceremony, the, the four the four soldiers that are that are um, asked to go scout out the enemy or the center pole, which, which represents the enemy. Um, they're, they're given the opportunity to stand up and talk as, as long as they want. They can talk for five hours if they felt like it. And the, 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 the thing is, is that that's the only time that a specific um, tobacco mix can be made is when a, a, um, a veteran gets up and talks because it's, it's, that's, that's how Wakan or that's how holy it is. For, for a veteran to be able to talk about it, his wartime experience or his lifetime experience. And um, during that time, it's, it's very sacred, it's very solemn, um, and people are given um, that opportunity to, to, to get up and just say whatever they want, need to say and what they want to say. And a lot of the times, it's, it's like one of those, those wounds that um, have healed a little bit, but when, when, it's, it's, uh, when, it's, when it's reopened, everything just comes out and it's just... It, it's it's really um, it's really healing in that aspect that the, the veterans get to do that, and then if they're a veteran that has chosen to to commit themselves to the medicine lodge, um, they can they can uh, pledge to 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 also uh, pierce and, and drag buffalo skulls. Uh, I've done that for a couple of years, um, and it, it's just it's just a great uh, uh, just something that's been done for time since time immemorial immemorial, and we've had it in our this specific uh, ceremony in, in our um, in our in our tribe for at least 385 or, or so um, lodge lodge makers. So there's there's been like I guess you can look at it as like them having an administration like 10 to 20 years. So if you if you multiply that by 385, you've got um, a good 4,000 years of a ceremony that's been conducted for the past 4,000 years. And, and we know that this has to be done um, because our people won't survive if we don't do this. Um, so it's, there's a lot, of, a lot of responsibility given to our veterans. Um, and and that's, that's part of the, one of the warrior societies that um, one of the aspects of uh, being, a, being a veteran and being a, a soldier who's come back home and, and, and uh, stood up as a leader. Um, you know, as a four star, I've been, uh, my, my family, we, we have quite a bit of responsibility. And right away when I moved back home, um, back in 2003, 2004, 
I was asked to voluntarily step up as the chairman of the Fort Peck Assiniboine Council. So I've been doing that on and off for the past, um, you know, almost 20 years now. And, uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot of responsibility. And then I think that um, most of all, the, uh, the, the healing aspects of, of ceremonial life, such as, such as the medicine lodge, um, and those type of things, I, I think that that's that's when uh, our, our our veterans are really able to to um, to be who they are, and that's something that's uh, that's been in our in our societies and our in our in our tribes since time immemorial. So it's it's something that we know that works. It's a, it's a traditional way of dealing with the trauma, dealing with the uh, with, with all that type of. Um, um, the, the, the weight that you carry as, as a veteran, um, you know, and sometimes it's, it, it's overwhelming. Like, 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 uh, like we had talked about that, that, um, that instant anger and that instant, um, you know, frustration, I guess, like even tonight, I, as I was trying to get on this call, it seems like there's everything in the world trying to, trying to stop me from getting on this call, <laughs> but uh, I, I won't give up, you know, and, uh, my, my family, we got disappointed that we got turned away from a veterans dinner, but, um, you know, I already prepared, I made chicken already. So, <laughs> but, uh, the, the main thing, yeah. Um, for, for Indian people, we have a lot of tenacity, you know, and we, we try to get things done for sure. Yeah. So oh yeah, I really, I really appreciate your, you know, uh, due diligence to try to, you know, uh, join us tonight. Um, you know, you, uh, I was talking to you the other day and you said something really interesting. It was uh, to the point, uh, something like, um, you know, for Indian people to to celebrate and be so patriotic, it, it almost seems like there's a juxtaposition. Uh, can you can you um, comment on that? Yeah, I think that the, the contradiction that we, you spoke of, um, you know, due to the fact that um, a, lo a lot of the times that our our reservations and, and our tribes, you know, um, out of the so many federally recognized tribes. A lot of us, we, we got into this this situation, this reality. We inherited this reality from our parents and our grandparents. Um, and, and a lot of the times, um, it's unbeknownst to us how um, history played its part uh, in, in order for us to to be in this position to to almost the the, the, the contradictions that we live with, the the, the um, societal roles that you know when we talk about sociology, um, everybody has a role, and if you um, you know, with Native Americans, especially that were forced onto reservations, the, the Fort Peck Assiniboine um, tribe, we were at one point, we were um, probably about 97% of us um, were, were killed off by the smallpox epidemic. So the 3% um, that survived, um, the, the 4,800 that, that live here on the Fort Peck reservation, on and off the reservations, on Fort Belknap and then up in Canada, we have a number of reserves that um, our relatives live on. Um, we've been decimated by 97%. And, and when we think about that, that only happened 200 years ago. That only happened, um, you know, I guess if there's four or five generations in, in a century, it only happened about, um, you know, six or seven or eight generations ago. So um, the, the reality that I inherited, um, you know, as I as I get older, and I don't profess to be um, too uh, too wise about everything, but I, I've done what I can to to learn about the uh, plenary authority of Congress um, over Indian land and Indian Indian people, about our, our uh, um, about our reality here with with the, the criminal jurisdiction levels of uh, jurisdiction, and you know, Indian on Indian, Indian on non-Indian. Um, crime and all that type of stuff and then we just have this so, so many they call it like a maze of jurisdiction um, so within that maze um, I've also you know uh, awakened you know when I was born I, I woke up to a, a reality where um, you know my grandparents they, they had uh, gone through the, the things that they had gone through the, the great grandparents were in boarding schools um, and then uh, a couple of generations before that, they were put on the reservations um, and alcohol. My, my grandmother, Frida Forstar, she remembers when alcohol was released on the Fort Peck Reservation back in uh, the, the 1930s. And she passed away a couple of years ago, but um, she remembers what it was like when there was people passed out everywhere because of the, 
the, uh, the, the reservation was opened up to to that to that way of uh, to, to alcohol. To alcohol. And we our alcoholism as as, as a people, you know, we um, that that uh, sickness also uh, woke up too. So the um, so that all these different intergenerational traumas, you know, the the stuff that we carry um, due to the fact that like our people were almost decimated. It's a miracle that I'm a, I'm a, allowed to um, to speak today to be give, to be afforded the opportunity to speak on behalf of my people and and my family due to the fact that there, that there are so many contributing factors that, um, that that you know would have have me in the ground right now and the, the fact that um, you know when, when I was 21 years old or 20 years old and I, I raised my right hand and and I swore to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I, I had no idea that, um, you know, where it would take me and, and everything like that. But I, I knew that I had to do that because I was raised by my grandfather, Marshall Wells, who was a Silver Star recipient. He was shot down in, in, in Northern Italy. Um, he was still promoted after he escaped from the POW camp and made it to Northern Africa. I remember all these stories that he talked about, and all these sacrifices that he had to make because uh, he, he partially raised me up in, in Washington State. Uh, and it, it just, uh, a lot of those stories, when I was in third grade, my uh, my uncle, David Wells, he um, took me on a tiger cruise from Honolulu, Hawaii to Alameda, California. Um, and I got to... Uh, uh, see what electronic warfare was about his MOS, his military occupation skill. Um, and I got to see F-14s break the sound barrier and all these type of things. And um, there, there was just, it was an awesome experience. And, you know, just that, that smell of jet fuel. I could still remember the smell of jet fuel. And I remember the chow hall and I remember all these things. And, um, you know, these, these opportunities, these, these type of things when I was young just really instilled, um, you know, the, this need for me to, 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 to also um, do what I had to do to, to protect and defend my, my family. Um, like I said, when I was 16, um, I, I worked for Senator John McCain and his story as a prisoner of war um, just really uh, just really instilled something in, in my mind and my heart for, for the sacrifices that it took for, for ordinary people to stand up and, and be willing to die. Um, but for Native Americans, uh, we have that, um, you know, it's, it's been told to me that um, uh, as a as a citizen of, of, of this um, sovereign nation, um, I don't have to stand up and fight for the United States of America. I didn't have to raise my right hand, um, but due, due due to the fact that I did, I, there, there's like this there's a additional honor that, that that was bestowed upon myself and my brothers and sisters who all decided to defend our, our country. Something that's bigger than just our little reservation, just our, our, our tribes ourselves. Even even though we um, we encounter racism um, on a on a daily basis, um, this last administration, oh man, that was that was crazy when uh, when when the, uh, the the white supremacists were allowed just to to be out and about and open about their white supremacy. Um, and it, it's kind of like you you know this 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 hatred exists, but but we as natives. Um, we also understand that our the government that we've decided to to fight for to, to stand up for um, represents is based in, in in Native American concepts of, of government and, and equal representation and, and, and all these type of uh, uh, these type of things where our uh, you know even the, the the style of fighting you know we know that guerrilla warfare was was adopted by by uh, by the United States. Um, according to the, the tactics that instead of getting in file and rank, um, you know, just going into battle like that, there was, uh, we were able to blend into our environment, to do all that type of stuff. So there's, there's just so many contributing factors. Um, our code talkers, we, we have a cinnamon code talkers. My, my uncle, um, uh, he was, he passed away. He was a chief over in, in Fort Belknap. He was part of uh, Merrill's Marauders and um, Gilbert Horn. And he was a, a Cinnaboyan a code talker. So, so for a number of years, he's, our, our uncles and our, and our grandparents, they, they carried the secret knowledge that they contributed um, uh, to, to these uh, 
to these different battles by using by utilizing our, our traditional language in, in ways to represent you know like the you know the the Navajo Kotakas, the Ney Kotakas, uh, they, they received a lot of fame for for their for their Kotak uh, contributions, but there were a number of others, the Muskwaki from you know Sakin Fox, the uh, Kiowa, I, I believe, the, the Sioux, the the Cinnaboy. There were just so many languages that were used, and they were they were unbreakable. And, you know that's that's something that that uh, contributing. Um, uh, factor of, of Native Americans, something that we've, we've contributed to, to to win the war, um, World War II. And then, uh, and yeah, there are there are just so many um, contradictions to the fact that uh, why why should we be doing this? Um, you know, why why do we stand up? But then we also look at our 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 uh, the the efforts of our of our of our our, our government uh, officials and the Native Americans that are standing up within state and tribal um, government, federal government positions where they're, they're, they're standing up. And, and our, our ancestors died and, and they, they sacrificed for our ability to do that, to find, find a place at the table amongst uh, the, you know, the, it, up in Washington, D.C. at the state capitals, the state legislatures within our, our, our city governments and, and our tribal governments. They, they fought and died for us to be able to to, to be citizens of the United States of America. So it very much is that disproportionate amount of Native Americans that have stood up and, and fought and served for the United States. We, we very much love our country. And, um, you know, the, the benefits are, um, you know, are exponential. I, I believe that whatever you put into something, you'll get out. And I think that our people have put an extraordinary amount of effort into, in, into the um, into the into the effort itself, the, the whole concept of serving in in the armed services. So. It's it's true that you know our, our, our all of our tribes have suffered so so greatly throughout the years, and that our uh, uh, patriotic uh, uh, spirit is is still a, so much engaged in our people. And I always say it's it's a, the way we we're raised, the way we we're taught our value systems is. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit different, um, the, the values that are instilled by our elders. Um, so, uh, Blas, so I, I want to ask you. Uh, I want to ask you another question, and then uh, we'll we'll turn it over to asking uh, uh, questions from the from our audience. So, um, I want to finish up uh, with a, a, a question to you. Is um, is that um, uh, why is it important for uh, why is it important for the Kiowa? Uh, Black Legends Warrior Society to continue. It's an ancient society. It's full of warriors, full of great men who and uh, doers of great deeds. Um, why, why is it important for that to to continue into the 20th and 20, 21st century? Well, that's I have to, I'll have to sleep on that. No. <laughs> Good cow <laughs> answer. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, um, you know uh, wh what? What I want to say about um, um, a couple of things. Uh, how our people? How me? I was, um, um, and um, way back. In the 1800s, you know, our our um, we took captives, Mexican captives, white captives, um, into our tribe, and we allowed them to advance uh, in positions of leadership. And so, um, um, our our tribe, um, when we made peace came in uh, at the end of the uh, Red River, so-called River Red River War in 1874. Um, we, um, our, um, uh, I guess our, uh, everything was kind of set regarding acknowledgement of uh, our leaders at that time. So all the names of their chiefs and uh, war chiefs were well known at that time and they're still known today. today. Um, and but in our society, when it was revived, and then so uh, along I came, men like myself, 
uh, that uh, were uh, um, 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 some my Makawa great grandfather is an example, um, and, uh, and my other relatives they were warriors. They weren't chiefs and weren't hidden. But uh, but in, but uh, our leadership, just like of old, there was a opportunity if you if you qualified if you had uh, uh, an unbeknownst to me and you know what I what I went through in Vietnam, uh, uh, I acquired uh, you could say war honors, you know, yeah. and so. Um, Somehow or some way, those old those leaders at that time, um, Gus Palmer, Dixon, George, um, other leaders, um, even um, Dr. Everett Rhodes and others, um, they recognized um, young men like myself and others, and they selected us for uh, positions. So that's uh, how a person like myself. Um, got in a leadership position and so um but uh, the your question is uh um i i it's uh it's a it's a it's an awesome responsibility to uh, because i am in a position now um to um uh to perpetuate our society i'm one of of um, half a dozen of one of four traditional leaders. And uh, I'm the second in command. And, uh, you know, the, the, one, the older ones that revived our society, they, they're all gone. They've passed on from this life. And so we, uh, we got big shoes to fill, you know, what, what it, with our, our language, our, our ways, mm -hmm. our dress, um, uh, all those things that make up uh, a tribe, a tribal society. Um, we've got uh, uh, so uh, people um, uh, get, depend on us to to keep it going, and so we are. Um, um, I guess you could say uh, um, myself. I'm. Um, I'm uh, uh, determined to uh, to keep it going. Uh, to look for young other young uh, or young men to to hand it over to to to, uh, uh, to teach them uh, as much as much as I can, as much as I know about uh, our society uh, to uh, veterans uh, and. To keep the door open for uh, veterans, for them to come in and uh, uh, to uh, learn, to um, cope, to heal from uh, the effects of, of war, and so um, that's what uh, it, and it, it's it's important as a uh, identity for our uh, our our you know our. Uh, not a Kiowa people, I'll just say this too, not just for Kiowa people, but our Indian people, just as an example, one of the things that uh, our, um, the organizers of our Tonkonga did when they, they, they organized in 1958 was they ordered, uh, organized uh, they, under a charter and they had a, a charter objectives. And uh, so one of those objectives uh, was to educate the non-Indian uh, uh, community about uh, our Indian, our culture. Mm -hmm. And so they created a uh, color guard uh, back way back then. And so when I became a member, uh, I came in, uh, I came, became a member late in life. So it's well, midlife, if you want to count, uh, consider 40. <laughs> so, and uh, so um, I think that's, no, maybe I was, uh, Oh, I can't remember exactly how, maybe 47, 48 years old. But um, uh, one of the things that uh, was there uh, was a color guard and uh, when I came in. And so I eventually uh, joined the color guard and um, 
and then uh, eventually uh, became my responsibility and uh, uh, to to organize a color uh, to uh, to organize our color guard and to coordinate color guard events. So we've had requests from uh, uh, within our tribe, uh, of, of other tribes in, in Oklahoma, uh, tribal or, uh, organizations with uh, in Oklahoma, and then uh, nationally, we've gone out to California as, and uh, Washington, D.C. as an example to present colors and a four-man color guard. And sometimes we'll use our uh, uh, our ladies auxiliary will be with us, uh, two or three of the members. And sometimes we'll use uh, our we have uh, um, our society is known for having two girls and two boy members. They're called Matanyi uh, Ga and Tali Yi Ga. Two boys, two girls. They they were they were uh, they served a a a. a, a, a well, a, a function way back then, and they still do, uh, mainly way back then to as a kind of a, a distribution of wealth. They came from wealthy or wealthy Kiowa families, our own day families, our top class. So uh, that, but getting back to that society, um, or not society, but that uh, color guard, and we've come to represent um, our Indian people uh, within Oklahoma. Uh, they uh, they see us and they take a pride in um, how we dress and that we represent them. Um, you know, so um, we uh, that's a, uh, another reason we need to uh, keep our society going. Mm -hmm. So I hope I made some sense. And uh, um, but. Um, Regarding, uh, but we we uh, 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 we need this. I mean, I I, I guess uh, to to explain it, uh, I'll get a more uh, or better. Or is uh, for me, it was a definite place where I found a uh, uh, a, uh, a a place for healing the the uh, the the camaraderie, the relationship with the members. The opportunity to to dance, the opportunity to uh, uh, to uh, acknowledge uh, within myself, uh, uh, remember the men the men that I was with that uh, that died, that were killed in action, the went the ones that uh, uh, were uh, wounded, the the men the men uh, of our tribe that were killed in action to remember them to acknowledge them and to pay my, our uh, to my respects uh, uh, to them is uh, in uh, uh, throughout the ceremony or uh, and um, so it's uh, it 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 made it it uh, it built me up as a person within my uh, my spirit and um, uh, it, it was a means of healing for me so if it, if if it uh, meant a place if it healed uh, uh, meant that it had helped me to heal then that i wanted for other uh, veterans to have that opportunity uh too so um that's why um you know i want to see it continue yeah and it's so important to to remember our veterans the people that put our their lives on the line for our people and that's why it's the highest form of respect to remember the names on our battle tv the the soldiers uh, the kiowa veterans who lost their lives were the ones that have served and 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 in whatever aspect and i think that goes along with most tribes is that you know we we want to have that that, that that good way those old good ways come back and and show that uh, the old-fashioned respect because uh, that's you know, if you're taught when taught that when you're young with your value system, it, it carries with you your entire life, and that's uh, uh, you know that's the way I see it, I guess. Um, uh, Lance, uh, Lance, we have a couple of questions here. Um, uh, some okay. of our, some of them are out there, but I would like to ask you this one about um, uh, war bonnets. Do you have any comments about when it's appropriate to wear a war bonnet or who should wear a war bonnet? Because I know there's a lot of viewers out there that are probably a little bit confused about the significance of that and, and, and the appropriateness of that. Can you can you help us out uh, just kind of talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, just briefly, I, um, you know, the, the, the first time that I, that I came back to, to my reservation, I'd already, had already served um, probably about 10 years before, um, uh, or five or six years before I, I, I moved back to the Fort Peck Reservation and got to know um, the, my father's side of my family. But uh, one of the first things that, you know, for my identity, I really wanted to, to, to try to figure out who I was and where I come from. And, and one of those rights, you know, I, I, I wanted to find out if I had the right to wear a war bonnet. You know, I talked to my, to my grandmother, Frida Four Star, and um, she said, yeah, and we'll, we'll get you one. And, <laughs> but uh, one wasn't ever made for me, but there, I, I was uh, given the opportunity to, to wear one that our, um, our tribal college uh, president, Haven Gorno, it, we, we've got this uh, beautiful war bonnet that has a, um, a, a number of eagle feathers that trail all the way down um, in the back. And, and it just happened, I'm six foot five, 326 pounds right now. So it's, uh, I, I'm a tall man. I'm a, I'm a really big man. So when, when I put this, this, this war bonnet on, um, it actually it, it reached all the way to the ground without any of the eagle feathers um, dragging on the ground. But I don't know if anybody else would, would have been able to do that. Um, but I, I wore that war bonnet um, along with other tribal leaders down at Standing Rock when a number of tribes answered the call from the Standing Rock Sioux tribe to come help stand against the Dakota Access Pipeline. So there were um, our, our uh, tribal executive board um, members that were uh, veterans, uh, Terry Rattling Thunder, Tony Shields. Um, I, I believe there were there were a couple other a couple other veterans and, and a female um, tribal executive board member that that went down there with us, and and a number of our traditional um, uh, people here and, and a lot of our water protectors, they, they all followed us into camp as, as our uh, Fort Peck uh, delegation went, went down there. Um, that, that was one instance where I was able to, to, to wear a war bonnet proudly and I got to, got to stand up and, and talk, talk in front of thousands of people and, and got to do that. But um, a lot of the times the, the war bonnets are worn during um, during ceremonies, uh, at, um, at, at like at w when a when a uh, a veteran comes home after combat, or they come out, they come home after service, or after um, successfully graduating from basic training, they'll come home during what we call a celebration. A lot of people in Indian country call it uh, powwow, but up here in in Montana, we call it a, a celebration. So our, our red bottom celebration is is a is a good um, uh, good, good example of, uh, you know, what a traditional, traditional old, old school, um, uh, celebration is, and it's four days. Um, but oftentimes there's, um, you know, so many sessions throughout, throughout the, the celebration and all the different categories of men and women and children, um, they all contest dance. And in between they'll have, um, uh, an opportunity for a family to honor, a veteran that has come home either from, like I said, successfully graduating AIT or grad or basic training or has, uh, has done their, their, their time in the service and comes home. So a, a family member will um, dance in the, the veteran who stands in front wearing the, a war bonnet that was given to them. Um, and they have that right to wear that war bonnet. Um, and, and they, they go around the Arbor as a, as a honor song is sung by a, by a drum group that they that they choose, um, the family is allowed to to go through and 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 members of of the of the community and our tribes and, and the visitors they they come and they shake the hand of the of the veteran that's being honored and and go through and shake the parents' hands and the family's hands and and follow behind um, in file with uh, um, they they fall in in. in in line with with the family and the community and you know uh, a lot of the times that arbor will be um just full of people that that, that have come and honored the veteran and and a lot of the times um you know the the master of ceremonies will will include a lot of information about the who that veteran comes from who that soldier comes from who their parents are who their grandparents are um and why they're why they're serving what branch um another time that 
um, war bonnets or, or um, uh, eagle feather bonnets are, are allowed to be um, the, pr the protocol that um, in, in a um, inauguration, for example, for uh, a tribal executive board for a tribal government, a lot of time, a lot of times the, the, the war mothers the, um, and, and the veterans that are, that are being um, uh, inaugurated, that the inauguration is for, um, I know that's the wrong word for being, uh, but the ones that are, that are being placed into office, um, they're allowed to march in with, with the colors and, and, and with that war bonnet. Um, and a lot of the times um, uh, people don't realize it, but the, but the war mother, what a war mother is, is up here at least with the Dakota, Lakota, uh, the Nakota, um, a war mother is, is, is a mother who's, whose son or, or daughter is, is serving or has served in the military. And, and they have the, 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 an equivalent to that, um, to that veteran, the same status. Um, a lot of times the regalia, um, people wear regalia um, according to um, if they have the right to wear that specific, um, that specific regalia. And, and those headdresses are um, specifically for veterans, for war mothers, and oftentimes for our, our uh, Sundance chiefs, our, our, our uh, medicine log chiefs, they can, they, they get to go out there and, and wear that. A lot of times our, the chairman of our community organizations um, or the chairman of our, of our, our tribal councils, they have the right to, to wear um, those leadership uh, um, headdresses. So yeah, people can't just um, wear them whenever they feel like it. it it's, it's really, um, you know, it's really disrespectful for, for, um, for somebody that doesn't have the right to do that. And if, if you can wear a war bonnet and if you can, if you can wear a headdress, you, you'll know that you can wear it. <laughs> you can't just wear it. You can't just pick, pick one up and wear it. Um, so a lot of the times the, the, the costumes during Halloween and at these different uh, electronic dance music festivals, you'll, you'll see people wearing war bonnets and it just, it's re it really is disrespectful, even if they have good intentions behind it, but it's, um, you know, yeah. they haven't, er they haven't earned that right. So it's, um, but yeah, those are, those are, that's a lot of the protocol uh, behind wearing that, that, that type of traditional regalia. And, Thank you, Lance. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a, uh, you know, it's good information. And when, you know, when we see people, you know, during Halloween, young people or even older people don't understand what that means. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's almost like wearing a um, uh, purple heart or, you know, uh, uh, Lance, uh, 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 Bluff, can you follow up on that and your, your, your feelings about, you know, wearing it really quickly because we're running out of time here. Um, uh, the, uh, when is it appropriate to wear a war bonnet? Because we see uh, black leggings, some of the auxiliary wear war bonnets. And when is it not appropriate to wear war bonnets? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm listening to Lance and, um, He's uh, helping me understand, even uh, within, uh, uh, you know, my tribe, under, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 when in a, when it's a, um, I guess, an um, appropriate time. And, and one is, uh, you know, the War Mothers, our Kawa Victory Club, you know, and those are the, uh, the uh, organizations that were started during World War II uh, for our, um, uh, service men and women and uh and uh because what i'm saying regarding uh, the black leggings uh is that uh you know our women and so um and it, it's changed uh it used to be you know that uh, just uh you know our our our, our society is uh, like a um, it's a limited to uh enroll kawa men uh and so and then so it used to be that uh, uh, whenever we have our scalp dance, our victory dance, uh, then our, the mothers, the wives, the, 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 ch the daughters, and the sisters of our uh, members would dance and they would wear, it could wear uh, war bonnets uh, during those, uh, those, uh, those dances. And so, but times have changed. And so uh, we have a lot of uh, um, our, our Kiowa uh, um, women uh, that aren't in those um, categories that come in dance. And but that's that's you know we've we've uh, relaxed our uh, our uh, I guess our, our uh, re uh, relax that requirement. 
and uh, so uh, and uh, so that uh, so they the women can wear war bonnets at those at that time. Uh, we don't let uh, we don't allow them to uh, to wear war bonnets whenever like we have a processional at uh, the uh, at one at uh, the beginning of our ceremony, and the no no war bonnets uh, other than by worn by men can be uh, worn at that time, and so. Um, um, and then uh, different times, uh, they're, they're like uh, polit the our, uh, uh, executive branch, our, our go tribal government is now in, uh, um, let's see, separation of uh, powers or what do you, I think that's the right term. But anyway, um, executive, legislative, and judicial. Uh, we don't have a judicial, uh, uh, active uh, judicial branch right now, but sometimes our uh, uh, elected officials will uh, will wear bonnets on occasion, but uh, um, but uh, and you know that, that's that's okay. Uh, so um, and then with our um, war mothers and uh, you know they're definitely uh, it's okay mm -hmm. at at the appropriate time that they have scout dance and victory dance. Uh, those uh, the mothers can wear the, the war bonnets, you know, at that at that time. And that's a way of honoring their family member who who uh, you know puts his life on the line. Um, uh, you know, this has been a great talk of, uh, about our, our societies, and I, I wish you could go on a little bit longer because there's so much to learn, there's so much of, there's so so deep in in culture, and and sometimes it's hard to put our fingerprint on on what that is. It's just, it's hard to explain that without you being there and seeing that and experiencing that. So I'd hope that um, you know our audience out there would try to. Uh, Maybe come down to our Black Lady, which is on the second week of October normally, right? Well, we haven't had our ceremony in uh, two years, you know, COVID. because of, of the COVID, and uh, we hadn't talked about COVID. <laughs> and uh, but uh, I, I'll, I'll say something about that here. Um, and uh, but um, and, uh, normally, uh, you know, we have uh, once a year uh, Columbus Day weekend, but uh since we haven't had it the last two years we're gonna uh tentative we're gonna have it in may of uh the next year so you're all welcome to uh uh to uh to uh to to come down it's uh, held in indian city usa and i'll just say this one thing real quick I have a second mm -hmm. say this. uh you know uh, uh, being a leader you know um uh, uh, this i uh, said responsibilities providers and defenders of their tribes, communities, and cultures. There's a segment of us that from, I was there along with other headmen and just like with our other tribes, so, you know, North and South, East, West, and, uh, Oklahoma and parts of the United, in, you know, United States, we had to carry on, you know? And so, uh, and uh, I don't know something about us, our Indian people, you know, we. We follow the instructions of our uh, people, uh, uh, our health officials, you know, the protocols, and as best we could, we had to keep on going. We we buried our our relatives, had to go do what we had to do. You know, we've seen all the changes and even the, the uh, protocols of our uh, funerals and, you know, had to bypass a lot of our things that were, uh, that were ritual, you know, like our wake services, church services. And so, um, but uh, there, I just want to say to all the other people that were just like us, you know, that we come through it and uh, want to thank you for being strong and, and going, getting out there and, and uh, uh, continue to do what you had to do for your, your people. You know, I'd really hope like, uh, you know, young veterans uh, seek out um, things like this or, uh, for support and, um, you know, things to to uh, be a part of the tribe. Um, anyway, this is this is the end of my portion. I really want to thank uh, Lance Four Star and uh, Bloss Presidio. Uh, it's, it's a great honor to be here, especially, you know, when you know, these people who put their lives on the line like uh, Bloss, you know, these these guys are considered war chiefs, uh, very special people within our tribe. And, you know, I just really, really appreciate their, their time, their patience with young people who try to understand some of the, the things and experiences they went through. And, and Lance, do uh, you, you have anything to say as, as we uh, turn it over to, to George? 
I just wanted to, to thank all of the, the veterans out there. Uh, Mr. Presidio, I, I thank you for your service. I thank uh, Georgiana for giving us the opportunity to, to, to really talk about some of these really important issues that, that veterans, you know, um, that we deal with on a daily basis. You know, there, there's so many things I, I really wanted to, to add, but I, I'm very long winded. So I'm, I thank everybody for being patient with me and, and, uh, and all these different, uh, uh, technical difficulties that I've had, but, um, yeah, thank you very much for giving me opportunity to talk. And I, and I thank all of our, our native veterans, uh, and I wish everybody a happy veterans day. Panamaya and no. That's great. You know, and, and I say that uh, Indians are technically challenged, but we 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 keep on keep on going. And uh, uh, with that, I'm just gonna I'm gonna turn it over to George, and she's gonna kind of lead us out. So uh, thank you again. My name's Boots Kennedy, and it was, it was great to be here. Thank you, Boots. Thank you so much for moderating this panel. Thank you, Bloss, and thank you, Lance, for your for joining us tonight and offering your wealth of experience and knowledge. And thank you to you, the viewer, for joining us for this event. I also want to thank all of our donors. It's because of you that we're able to make events like this possible. And right now, thanks to the Claire M. Hubbard Foundation, you can double your impact. Every donation received from now until December 31st will be matched 100%. By, no, by donating to Vision Maker Media, you're ensuring events like this remain free and open to the public. If you're interested in making a tax deductible donation, please visit us at visionmakermedia.org. And if you haven't already, we encourage you to watch Boots' recent short film series, Under the Battle TV, that can be found streaming for free until November 24th at visionmakermedia.org. We appreciate your time and dedication to helping support Native stories. If you want to stay connected and find out more about us, we welcome you to follow us on social media or sign up for our e-newsletter. Until the next time our paths cross, good night and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, down day. Thank you.